I've been an advocate for the environment all my life. I've even been called a tree hugger by the press. But nothing prepared me for some of the far out ideas embraced by the heads of the Ananda farm. The community eats a lot of vegetables each year, so a lot of our produce is just picked from the field and served uh, at the market or the expanding light. We grow tons of tomatoes, we grow tons of lettuce, we grow tons of carrots, we grow herbs of 50 types. Easily. Yeah, 30 crops. <laughs> and about 500 different trees, shrubs, medicinal plants, and then a lot of annual crops as well. So we're focusing on the long-term planting for many generations as well as the daily, weekly, and monthly needs of people who live here and all around as well. Based on the work that Luther Burbank, the American scientist, did on communion with plants, that's also a part of our farm that would probably differentiate it from a lot of other organic farms. What do you mean communing with the plants? Talking to them, feeling their energy, feeling what they need, checking out their state, not only by visual and scientific methods, but also just by intuition. How do the plants feel? What do they need? Is it something you verbalize or is it something you feel? It's important to do both because the intuition is what's guiding us from our inner guidance, but then also sometimes we need to verbally chant, sing, pray with the plants, and it's a communication through vibration. Just like every human has a guardian angel, every plant has a deva or a nature intelligence, which helps it grow and expand itself and flourish into its greatest expression, just like we do. We can do some tastings. You should. David Ashi should give you a tour and see what you think. Okay, great. <laughs> Juliet, this is my husband, Alex. Hi. How do you do, Juliet? Nice, nice to, to meet, meet you. you. Would you like a strawberry? They're just picked. Mmm. That good? Amazing. So good. <laughs> Thank you. You're a welcome. This is a permaculture garden. It's different than other gardens. It mimics the wild forest. The plants are all varied. They mix together. They help one another. They help the soil. They help the insects. The insects help the plants. That's why nothing is in a straight line. All of these plants chose their spot. And so it will turn out the way it turns out, much better than we could have imagined or designed it. Because of a number of these kind of practices, we're building topsoil at the same time that we're growing food instead of diminishing it. The soil just improves every year by this practice. So we put a fair amount of energy in now to create and plant plants that are useful to humans. But over time, we're hoping our grandchildren and their grandchildren will be able to come here and, and feast. It's a magic garden. It is a magic garden, and we could all live this way.